somebody who um, has a herniated disc would be a person who would be ideal for a discectomy. Um, this would need to correspond to the appropriate findings on examination, the appropriate um, complaints from the patient, uh, and the appropriate MRI findings. When you have the combination of those three things, you can be much more sure that that is indeed the cause of the problem. And that's where suggesting a discectomy after the patient's had appropriate conservative therapy um, would come into play. For somebody who does not have a uh, herniated disc and a physical exam and a complaint that correspond and make sense together, even if you have a herniated disc, uh, it may not make sense to do that surgery. For example, I have seen patients who have a herniated disc on the right, but their left leg hurts. In that case, that right-sided herniated disc isn't the cause of their left leg pain. So people who um, would ultimately require a discectomy, generally come into the office with um, pain that radiates from the back down into the buttock and leg. It usually follows a very specific distribution. Um, there is oftentimes numbness associated with this. Uh, many times these patients will have difficulty sitting for um, periods of time, uh, especially in a car. Um, uh, a lot of times these people will want to stand during an interview or stand during the examination because it is more comfortable um, and most of the time their most comfortable position is walking. Best to first talk about what a disc is and how it affects the nerve as it travels by. Uh, the disc is a lot like um, a jelly donut. Um, there's a, a tougher outer portion and then there's a more gelatinous, uh, gooey center. Um, when you have a bulging disc, it's a lot like somebody um, stepping on that pillow, but uh, on that uh, donut, I should say, uh, and um, no jelly coming out at all. Uh, but you would flatten the donut and it would widen out a little bit. Um, if that was combined with pressure uh, from the back of the spine uh, where the joints are or where ligaments are, then that could create pressure on a nerve root. Um, a herniated disc is different. That's like when the jelly would come out of the donut and that jelly not only would create pressure on the nerve, but it would also um, irritate the nerve because the jelly portion of the disc has chemicals in it that are irritative and can cause the nerve to hurt even if it's not creating a lot of pain on it. A discectomy is um, getting down to that space around the nerve um, and that's done by um, uh, traversing the muscle. Uh, we do that by splitting the muscle fibers. Um, in the olden days, we used to peel the muscle away from the bone. Um, that created problems for the muscle. The muscle would lose its blood supply. And when that blood supply was gone, then that muscle would uh, die a little bit. It would shrink up and it would um, turn into fiber instead of muscle. And so that created issues. So instead, nowadays, we split the muscle. The muscle uh, fibers are opened. You go through them and you use a retractor to uh, keep them from the area that you're working at. Uh, and then when you pull that retractor out, those fibers come right back together again. Um, without removing the blood supply and so the muscle remains intact and, and healthy. Once you get through the muscles, you get down to an area where the bone is covering the area of the um, disc herniation. And you have to enter that space by removing a small amount of bone and some ligament that overlies that area. But once you've done that, you can see the nerve and the sac of nerves that the nerve comes off of. Once you can see those things, you can carefully move that nerve to the side so that you can look down upon that herniated disc. Once that herniated disc is, um, is exposed, you can then carefully enter that space. Sometimes the disc is already completely out of the outer covering, that what would be the bread part of the donut. 
um, when it is completely out, you don't have to cut the, the, uh, the outer portion of the disc at all. You just retrieve that herniated disc. Um, sometimes it's really bowing that tissue um, that would contain the disc material. And when that's the case, you have to actually open it with a small um, uh, scalpel. Once you do that, then the disc material that's out of place is able to come out. Uh, and once you've taken that disc material out of play, out of its um, un unusual position, the place that it's causing pressure on the nerve, then you can um, make sure that there's no further pressure on the nerve, make sure that there's no bleeding, um, and then uh, pull everything, all the retractors and everything out of, so that you can um, close things up. Uh, but the gist, the, the main portion of a uh, discectomy is um, taking the pressure off of the irritated nerve root. After surgery, uh, um, uh, when you have a discectomy, uh, typically I restrict people's lifting uh, to about 20 pounds for the first six weeks after surgery. For the next six weeks after that, I increase that to between 30 to 40 pounds. Um, I also restrict their driving for about two weeks. Um, if somebody comes in to, to see me at 10 days, which is the typical time period that um, I see people back after surgery, um, and they're doing great, and they have no pain, and they're not taking any medication, and they're functioning very well, then I might let them go back to driving earlier. But um, a hard, fast rule is usually about two weeks. Um, as it pertains to work, um, I think it's reasonable for people to consider going back to work after a discectomy at around two week mark. Um, of course, some people will feel uh, uh, much better and be able to go back uh, earlier. Um, I would really only recommend that in people who don't have jobs that challenge the area of their surgery. So people who don't have to do bending, lifting, twisting. Um, somebody who has more of a uh, sedentary job who can break up periods of sitting with getting up and standing and walking for short periods, um, that person I think could probably go back um, as early as two weeks or maybe even a little bit earlier than that. For somebody who does heavy work, um, bend, lift, twist, uh, changing tires, uh, lifting heavy uh, um, uh, construction uh, um, material, that person really is going to need to wait about three months before they can go back to work.